Okay, six o'clock. And um, I'd like to call the Finance Committee, the City of Twinsburg, uh, to order. It's uh, Tuesday, March 23rd. And uh, right now, I'll call the roll. The Finance Committee, uh, Joanne McFerrin's here, Scott Powers here, Sam Strapidis here, the committee's here. Also in attendance is Daisy Walker, Bill Curry, Maureen Stocker, uh, Law Director David Maestros, and our Finance Director, uh, Sarah Boutros, <coughs> and the esteemed Mark Wachowski in the back. Um, okay, there is no audience, I guess, right? Do we have any audience participation out there? <coughs> Nothing, okay. Uh, approval of the February 23rd Finance Committee meet uh, meeting minutes. Uh, Finance Committee, anybody have any questions or comments? No, I'd, I'd make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Okay, is there a I second? second? Joanne seconds. Uh, Scott made the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passed. We're going to move on to the 2021 permanent appropriations. And I guess first up is Public Works, Chris Campbell. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I was on mute. The service department plus they did probably quite a few less projects uh, this year their total 2021 budget is just under six million dollars um, Chris did you want to speak to those two items underneath the numbers there for the service department uh, the seasonals um, we like like Sarah said we didn't we didn't hire any seasonals last year so normally we have 16 to do all the grass cutting and all the, the summer activities um, so we're going to go back to um, a full seasonal crew um, and then the uh, full-time staff we've been uh, short on staff for a few years now uh, and it includes not only um, maintenance people but it also includes um, a uh, foreman and uh, general superintendent so we've been we've been short all the way through the ranks so uh, our plan is to go back as close to full staffing as we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then over on the wastewater treatment plant side, uh, in 2019, the spend was 2.8 million, 2020, 2.9, uh, 2021, uh, it's up to 3.2, but we did leave a little room in there for the anticipated hiring of a class four license. If you wanna talk about that a little bit, Chris. The, uh, the class four license is an EPA mandate the uh, treatment plant uh, must be under the direction of a class four uh, wastewater operator uh, I'm the one at this point that holds that license and uh, we're going to have to plan for the future so we we need to go out and locate a uh, class four uh, operator and try to get them to come to the city of Twinsburg All right, Chris, you want to keep on going with your departmental updates for service? Okay, department updates. Um, we've li I've listed leaf and branch pickup. Um, those are pretty popular programs. And um, looking at trying to enhance service, um, really the, the only way to do it, I mean, we're looking at uh, possibly sending more information out to the residents as far as when we're going to be in an area um, and, and information is good but it doesn't get us out there to pick up leaves and branches so if we're going to do that uh, we need to spend more time out there and what I've done is look at uh, spending some money on overtime in order to get the crews out there more and to enhance those programs those you know those the difficulty there, especially with the uh, leaf program, is we get into we we go into the season uh, and we do pretty well. And when we hit the peak of that season, we we just can't keep up. And residents are you know they're they're upset with the amount of time that it takes us to get back to 
their their homes and get the, the uh, leaves picked up um, you know we have we put all of the the equipment on the street that we have uh, we put as many crews together as we can but I think um, enhancing that program with some overtime will is something that'll show to the to the residents so that is the that's a suggestion at this point I can't see the screen at the same I can't time. see the screen either, so I, I don't so, I don't know what I could say here. I, I just I'm listening. That's all. Yeah. That's very hard, difficult to read. Can yeah. can you tell us what when you say some overtime, is there a dollar figure associated with that on that chart? What does that I've suggest mean? I've suggested somewhere in the area of thirty thousand dollars. Okay. That sounds reasonable to me. For for both for uh, branches and leaves? Yes. Uh, branches, most of that overtime would go to leaf pickup. The slides are in your email if you want to bring them up on your iPads. That might be easier to see. Well, why would I want to do that? <clears throat> what a thought. <laughs> I'm backing up something here. Give me a break. It's also in the, don't have it, paper. It's I'm, also I'm, in the box app. I know. If you guys have, if it's easier to access your box app, it's in there. I'll bring paper next time. I didn't mm -hmm. realize we were in person sort of until half hour ago or so. High maintenance. But I, I still don't see the mention of the overtime, the number. Is it on here? Um, I think I'm It's not on the thing. slide. Chris was oh. just mentioning okay. it's a couple of Okay, okay. I thought it was on the slide and I couldn't, I couldn't find it. No. That's rough. And, you, you know, I will, I will say this. We're, you know, we're suggesting around $30,000. I could probably ask for seventy thousand um, it, dollars. It's just you know what's reasonable. Um, you know what what enhances the program. Um, so I mean we, we think this this will help to um, satisfy the residents' needs. Less than one guy. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Okay. Still you, Chris. Next one down on the garage. Okay, service garage design and planning. Um, we've talked about the uh, service garage, the uh, the needs there, um, and we would we'd like to start those discussions. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, we really need to um, study exactly what we need. Uh, when we say we we would like to to build a a, a new garage. I can't tell you at this point how many square feet that would end up being. All I know is the different areas of need. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, we have fleet maintenance with an area that's just not adequate for the entire fleet. We we have vehicles and equipment throughout the whole building. Um, you know, when we're working on them, and so what we'd like to do is bring some type of engineering firm in to. Um, sit down and, and let us explain to them, you know, what our needs are and have them help us decide, you know, how big the garage is, what, what uh, amenities we need in there and so forth. But uh, in order for us to establish the, um, the, the project, I, I think we need to identify what that project is first. So I, I think that's our... Um, our biggest uh, hurdle here is, is, is it 5,000 square feet? Is it 100,000 square feet? I don't know. Uh, and then the other thing is, depending on the size of that facility, um, you get into location. You know, we're, we're pretty uh, landlocked where we're at. I don't know. I'd love to keep it where it's at. Um, but based on the needs and, and the um, preliminary design, um, we'd have to decide where in the city, you know, can it stay where it's at, or do we need to look at a different location? I don't, I don't know that, but we we need to establish the, the project first. And the last one, sir, I think staffing needs is, is back to getting our staff back to um, full what we consider full staff. Um, we're we're short uh, five people, so. Down there under your upcoming capital needs under service, I just picked out some of the higher ticket number items that we've got coming up on the five-year plan. Uh, but if you wanted to talk a little bit about the salt dome that we had chatted about before. Okay. Um, salt dome, and Sam will understand this, the uh, 
when we're purchasing salt, you know, we're we're in um, we're in groups that either is an 80-20 or a 90-10, meaning when you commit to the program, you have to purchase at least 80 or 90 percent of your committed tonnage. Um, and on the other hand, they only have to provide us with 10 or 20 percent above what we've asked for. So, you know, we've been we've been fortunate lately, but in looking back at the records, we've used anywhere from 4,000 to upwards of 12,000 tons in a season. When you try to estimate um, how much salt you're going to need, you're you're going we're going to have a year where we're going to miss that target significantly. Uh, one way to combat that is is to uh, put another salt dome up, and we've talked about it at length. But our biggest hurdle again is where do we put it? Uh, we can't put it on our current site. Uh, because there just isn't room. And I think a satellite uh, dome would be great for us. We could cover different parts of the city with that. But, you know, in the end, it's, it's where do we put it? So, again, we're going to have, you know, I'm going to need help in, in determining exactly where we go with that. How so, much, How much bigger would the, the one you, okay, so we need um, more capacity to store salt. Is there a percentage larger than the current dome? <clears throat> Our, the, the, current, the current one we estimate hold between 1,800 and 2,000 tons of salt. Um, we would need at least that, that size. I, and if we had the, you know, if we had enough available acreage, I'd like to double that. So if we could put up a dome where, that was somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000 tons, that would give us, uh, with the existing dome, around 6,000 tons of capacity. Um, I've got a little bit of space over at the wastewater plant, but maybe 1,000 tons. And I, I think that would help quite a bit, so. Chris, are you looking for a, a dome building or like a coverall building uh, that would hold that amount of salt? Yeah, we, you know what, Sam, or we haven't, haven't gotten, gotten that to that point. Um, I, I think whatever, uh, you know, with whatever uh, land I can get, whatever holds the the most tonnage um, in the in the smallest footprint would probably be what we're looking for. So um, it, it, it would not have to be a dome like we have now. Yeah. Ultimately, we, it would be nice if we could have something on the other end of town. Um, if and I'm just so I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking if there's anywhere that something could go that you know the the vehicles up on the, the other end of town don't have to travel back down to ravenna road to get salt they can just salt right up uh in in the satellite location and cover yes. an area it saves you a lot of time that way but you know I don't it, know it certainly would yeah yeah i don't know if that's any thought of yours or not but or if there's even any property that we'd be able to do that with there's a vacant lot mm -hmm. right next to the uh bridge that goes over for Can't 480. Get on the I said there's a vacant lot that's right next to the bridge by 480 off of Chamberlain, which would be, I would think, a halfway decent spot. There's it's there's nothing on the property now. Is there a resident? Is there residential over there? It might be. They might not want to look at that either. Well there's no no, there's no residents near that bridge. Oh. I'm talking if you're going south on Chamberlain mm -hmm. and you're gonna to get to the bridge. On the right-hand side of the road, there was a house there that's been destroyed, and it's a vacant field with an asphalt entrance. And it, you know, just like the state highway, the state has a salt <coughs> depot by 480, you know, right off there. This would be another bridge down, kind of in the same sort of spot where it's stuck next to the bridge. I think that's still a little bit close, and we're probably getting ahead of the. All right. On the car before the horse, just a thought. Just like we did with the fire station when we had this one, we were thinking of going over to Highland Road off of 91. That made all the sense in the world. They wound up going up there on, on Glenwood, and that still makes sense because, you know, um, so something like that. I, I would hope that uh, if we did do a satellite somewhere, that could uh, work out that way. But anyway, go ahead, Chris. All right, Chris. So then on the other side of the slide, we've got wastewater. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to talk about the recruitment challenge for that class four license. 
um, and then okay. we'll talk real briefly about that reminder bill flow. Yeah, sure. The uh, the class four license um, there there's uh, that that becomes a, a challenge at times. Uh, there's not a lot of class four licenses in the state of Ohio, um, and and so it, it's a small group of people. Our treatment plant is required by the EPA to have that um, EPA li or that class four license. So. Um, you, you have to go out and you have to find the right candidate for that uh, for that position but it's it's one of those things that I found that um, bringing somebody from the other side of the state maybe or you know any long distance is, is kind of uh, difficult you know when people have to relocate for a job like that you're you're stuck you know within your region and there just isn't a lot of those people out there so um, it, it takes some time it, it takes some good recruitment uh, uh, practices and so I think it's important that we start that process and um, try to because we haven't had a, a uh, uh, this would be your, your superintendent we haven't had a superintendent in a number of years and um, he sorely missed I, I, I'll tell you it, it's uh, it's tough functioning for myself without uh, a class four over at the wastewater plant. Um, my license uh, fills that requirement, but you know, with, with everything I'm doing, I, I do have to spend time over there to make sure operations are, are correct and we're in compliance with the EPA uh, permit that we have. But um, like I said, we, we, we really need to get started because I think it's going to be a long process. We've talked to Summit County, uh, they have a few class fours on, on staff and, and they struggle to, to bring somebody in. So, and kind of along that same line, I just wanna let you know, um, our industrial pretreatment coordinator in a very similar position, he's uh, degreed uh, in biology and chemistry. Uh, Ted's been with us for a number of years, Ted Martin, and he's, um, he's going to be retiring uh, at the end of this year, and uh, he's a key position in that in that department. He's uh, it's kind of the science behind everything, and um, so we're I think we're going to probably get into a little more recruitment there because it becomes a very specialized uh, position in that it's a it's a wastewater person, but we need somebody with a degree either in biology or chemistry, um, a little bit of uh, experience with industrial waste so uh it's a key it's a key part of that so you're, you're looking for the right candidate and uh, i i think we're getting get into uh, a little bit of uh, recruitment there as well um on the reminder bill flow we'll talk about the money that we received a little bit next <clears throat> month uh and we'll get into you know what that money can be used for what the sewer revenue fund can be used for what the sewer improvement fund can be used for because if you look down um, under upcoming capital needs under wastewater I just picked out the big items again but we've got uh, four and a half million dollars um, in improvements out at the wastewater treatment plant we have been growing our reserves there because we knew this was coming um, and then we did get that 1.9 for month reminder bill but we'll start talking about that a little bit more uh, next month um, and probably tie Amy into some of that as well because um, they tend to uh, talk about what those funds get to be used for um, next up we have public works uh, capital these are all items that you've seen before they were all approved by capital improvements board uh, but if there's any last questions that you have uh, for Chris there on those items um, I guess now's the time uh, anybody have any, uh, have any, have any questions? No, I, I just have one quick right. question, not even necessarily just because Chris is here. I've gotten several questions about um, dead grass in the tree lawns, and I just, I just didn't know it. I don't think we're going to do I know we haven't historically done anything. I know, Chris, I, I don't know if you can speak to that. I, I, it's been more than, more than a couple emails and phone calls I've gotten about that. Well, if that if it's dead grass uh, because of the leaves or branches, uh, we don't we don't generally do anything with that. Um, hopefully, 
if we increase our presence out on the street this uh, this fall with some overtime dollars, we, we can help that situation. Um, but uh, the, uh, the only other thing we do is we sometimes will cause damage with the plows. And uh, if they ride up on those roll curbs and they'll kind of strip some of the uh, sod out of there. We do go around in the spring and uh, repair those areas because it's actually damage that we've caused okay. with the uh, with the plows. Okay. Yeah, no, but, thank you. Yeah, this this was this was um, just due to the fact that the leaves and branches were there, and I and I think it was just kind of a, a perfect storm of you know we got a lot of snow really early, and it sat there. So no, it was not it was not damaged caused by the plows. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Nothing else. Sure. That that grass will usually it's pretty forgiving. Yeah. So a lot of times it comes back on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, how could we be responsible for that? I mean, some people put leaves out there as soon as the truck goes by and they know they got two, three weeks before it comes back yeah. again. So I mean, I don't know how we could take responsibility for that. We Any, ran extra, uh, we, had, we did run extra leaf pickup and extra branch pickup this year. Yeah. So it doesn't make just, sense. Maureen, you got a question? I do, I do have one question. Chris, you said five, or you're short five. Are those full-time employees you're, to get back up to staff? We we um, we have entry level uh, employees. The uh, main, we call maintenance people. Okay. Uh, we have those, and then um, we have uh, an opening for a uh, foreman, okay. and then ultimately we we've never replaced the general superintendent. Okay. So. And then that I feel like we've had this discussion about this operator before. Were we were we at one time talking about training somebody within? to get that class four license? Yes. We for the class license. four license, if you have somebody in-house, um, they have to be in responsible charge of the, uh, the plant for a period of uh, two years. And then you apply to the EPA to um, submit, and you, you have to submit a, uh, a paper. Um, and it includes studies you've done in, in the field it includes uh, safety programs that you've worked on. It's a whole host of things. Um, it's like a it's like a thesis, and um, we have we have we don't have anybody. Else. We have somebody on staff that's um, qualified to do that, but he has he has not done that, so. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Chris? I think we're good. We're good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Chris. Thanks, Chris. Yes, thank thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Have Thanks, a good Chris. evening. Next up, we have uh, Chief Morgan. Okay. So over in the fire department, 2019 spend was 3.7. The 2020 spend is a little bit deceiving there. I put uh, a note that 600 grand or so was paid with COVID relief funds. So really their 2020 spend was more towards that 3.65 million number consistent with 2019. Uh, 2021, they are bumped up a bit. Um, and I'll let Chief Morgan talk about the uh, personnel changes in the cadet program. Hi, good evening. Uh, Hi, Chief. Um, happy to be here to talk about the fire department. Um, as uh, Sarah mentioned, uh, we are hoping uh, through the course of this year to add uh, some personnel on, on three different levels, really, uh, full-time, part-time, and a cadet program um, which uh, I like to, uh, I want to liken it to uh, like a farm team program where uh, we're going to take uh, hopefully young people from the community uh, that uh, have an interest in the fire service and uh, help them get the credentials they need, not only to serve Twinsburg, but also to make themselves marketable um, potentially in neighboring communities as well. But what that does for us is it does give us some extra hands to take care of um, business here in Twinsburg, at, at least during their training years at a, at a reduced pay rate. So um, we still have a couple of final pieces that, that I need to, uh, uh, to get completed uh, for that, uh, working with Dave uh, to get a, an agreement signed. There will be a, a payback agreement that they'll need to uh, complete that if at any point uh, they pull out of the program um, early, they would uh, need to repay anything we invested in them 
or on a prorated basis for their education. So um, that's our way of um, kind of keeping them in the program and hopefully, hopefully uh, benefiting uh, from them being here, um, developing a, a uh, camaraderie with the people we have and hopefully a loyalty to the community uh, because of their experience with us and the fact that they grew up here. And we hope that will help us um, down the line with uh, making it easier just to keep our staffing up. Um, we continue to try to add some part-time personnel as well. Um, back in our, uh, the early, well, the mid nineties, late nineties, we were up to as many as uh, two dozen part-timers that helped us uh, fill the schedule. And uh, through uh, the 08, 09 uh, slowdown, we cut that all the way back to five. And it's been a real struggle to uh, reinvigorate that roster and build it back up to help us fill uh, the schedule. So uh, we continue to plug away at that. And uh, we've got uh, um, quite a few candidates in the um, vetting process that we're working on now, but uh, um, and we hope that we can uh, fill that roster out and really fill out our schedule to give us uh, you know, the, the, the manpower and the redundancy we need uh, to uh, make sure we have coverage for the community. Um, um, so, go uh, ahead. Sorry, uh, under upcoming capital needs, um, I think this is all items that you're all aware of uh, that we've gone over several times that you've seen on the five-year capital plan. Um, but uh, I know Chief did want to speak about the, the call volume increase um, in the and the concerns on the aging population in the community. Well, down on the upcoming capital needs, that both at the ladder truck position, you could put parentheses S after truck, and at med unit, you could put parentheses S there as well for multiple med Same. units um, because of the our aging fleet, and it's it's really kind of shown up here in the what does the S mean? Time. Multiple buying more than one. trucks. Yeah, uh, multiple oh, ladder trucks, sense. multiple med units. So you've uh, not necessarily immediately, but in the near future. And uh, my fault, we, Chief. I should I should have added the S. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, in, in within this month, with all the fleet that we have for a couple periods of time, I was down to one fire truck that operated. And that was just for a window of a couple of hours. But that's, that's what we've been, well, it, it, it comes down to a couple of things. I want to, I'll expound on that in a moment. And the same with the med units. There was a couple of times in this month where we've been down to one med unit in the city for uh, a couple of hours. And, um, uh, and the repair was made and we were able to get a second unit back into service. But part of this goes to service department's needs in that they don't have the facilities to be able to get some of our trucks in and do the thorough um, repair work that they need to do. Sometimes the repair work they end up doing is out in the parking lot and obviously there's times in the season where that's just not real conducive to quality work being done. So um, their needs are our needs <laughs> here as well. But, uh, you know, in the, the station needs, the parking lot needs, um, those are things that, uh, you know, to keep our people trained, to keep uh, our equipment housed properly, uh, uh, we really need to be looking into. But we're looking at an increase in call volume. Um, you know, last year it leveled off uh, from the year before, or well, actually we were, I think, three years short of the, the year before, uh, but we're right at 3,000 calls a year. But we're also seeing uh, by the statistics that our population in Twinsburg is aging. And uh, it's been snickered at before, but the population is in Twinsburg is aging faster than the national average. And that's because of the building stock that's coming into town and the way the town's being developed. And the aging population impacts us directly. And uh, 
And just for example, uh, if you may or may not be aware, the township, which we cover via contract, is building or planning on a 200 and some unit development off of 91 south of Old Mill Road to um, market to a 55 and over crowd. Uh, that's going to impact us directly. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's part of my job is looking at what could happen, what the likelihood of it is happening and how we can address it. And obviously that's all going to take personnel and equipment to do it. And then when you add the personnel and you add the equipment, the next question that comes up is, where does it make sense to have that personnel and equipment? So we you know the potential for a third station, uh, which has been talked about in this city, uh, as long as I've been a member of the department, and that's over 30 years now. Um, that's been in several of the plans or studies that uh, has been done on behalf of the city that we might need a third station sometime in the future. And I think it's drawing pretty close. So, um, uh, that, I guess that's the, 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 the short story there as far as the aging population. Uh, we're feeling the impacts. Um, right now, on a regular basis, about 35% of our calls are back to back. That means we have uh, two, at least two emergencies of some sort. And on a number of occasions, it's uh, three and four emergencies at the same time. And we have staffing. Generally speaking, we have staffing to, to handle the ones and the twos, but when we get to the threes and the fours, we don't have that strategic reserve of manpower just sitting around waiting for those calls. So now we're calling uh, for mutual aid and we're increasingly being denied that by our neighboring communities. In fact, we're seeing an increase in the number of times our neighboring communities are calling us for help because ultimately they're in the same position. Um, increasing calls with uh, restricted manpower. So, you know, just, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but we've got to look at what's coming down the road and, and start making preparations for it. I have a question on that last slide. So this gas fire utility unit, is that replacing something? I didn't even know we had a gas fire. Yeah, we have a grass fire truck um, and it's a, it looks like a, a work truck with a, with a small um, water tank and pump unit, a skid unit that goes in the back. Uh, the current one we have was purchased in 94. So do the math, it's uh, 27 years old. So uh, uh, it's it still runs decent, but it's starting to show rust. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's missing some of the um, safety features that are on newer pieces of equipment. And it certainly uh, doesn't have some of the emissions uh, standards built into this truck um, that some of the newer, that uh, some of the newer trucks would have for as far as uh, cleaner operation and uh, a more efficient operation. How often would we use the gas fire utility unit? Uh, it gets used uh, a couple times a year. Um, and part of it, um, it, it, for a couple different purposes, part of it's used for grass fires, but the other sort of purpose it uses as a tow vehicle for our Kubota, which is what we used for going on the trails and the parks to pick up the people that fall down. Uh, so uh, that's the other purpose for that truck uh, is as a tow vehicle. We all, we have a an additional trailer behind the station that uh, stores hazardous materials um, mitigation equipment, uh, diking material, uh, absorbent material, uh, firefighting foam. Uh, that's in a trailer that's out behind the station. That uh, if we need that equipment, uh, this grass fire truck would be used to tow that trailer. And we can continue the discussion on the grass fire truck. Um, that's on the five-year capital plan. Oh. Uh, so it's not something that we're committing to uh, right away. Uh, this next slide, fire capital, is on the current year capital budget. Again, all items approved by Capital Improvement Board. 
you guys saw these in the fall. Um, uh, the new engine is expected to arrive uh, this spring, hopefully in the next couple months. Um, but if you have any last questions for Chief Morgan on this year's capital? No, anybody have any questions? You know, I, I, do have, uh, I have one quick question. Chief, I'm just curious. You said there are times when we only have one med unit ready. You know, what is, what is the number you would, that should be there? I just, I have no idea. Well, we've been operating for a number of years uh, with three, okay. and uh, we've had a fourth unit available. We've used it for our water rescue equipment, but uh, in this past year, because of our situ fleet situation, we actually had to take the water rescue equipment off of it and turn it back into an ambulance for a while. And in fact, it sits out there ready to operate as an ambulance today. Uh, because uh, two of our other units are, or I'm sorry, one of our other units is broken. So uh, um, I, I th right now, I think we have to have three. I would really like to be able to maintain four. Okay, so you want one, two to always be in the station in case an something comes up. When, we've, when you say only one, only one is operating, one ready for a call, you would like two always ready. Is that, is that how I'm understanding well, that correctly? I mean, there's times where all three of our ambulances are on the road and hauling injured or, in, or sick people somewhere. So we don't have the next available ambulance. Okay. Okay. That's why we call mutual aid or, or call for help. But uh, okay. I mean, this, this uh, just for clarity, this month we've had a point where we only had one ambulance mechanically able to respond to an emergency because the others were broken down okay. for some reason. Okay. All right. Thank All you. Right. So, thank you. Thank you. Bill, you had a question. I, this would have been possibly on last year's capital or operating budget, but did we ever get the issue with the uh, engine replacement done? I, I, I knew that that take a little longer than we expected. Yes. Yeah, that's the, the picture that's on the slide there. That's the engine that's going to be delivered, uh, should be late M April, no. early May. I, I think he's talking about the med unit engine replacement. What happened oh, was I'm the, sorry. the engine I'm got sorry. replaced yes. and then um, it uh, failed it, again and had to go back into the shop. Uh -huh. Yes. Is what happened there. And Chris, uh, when, when Chris did his portion, he mentioned where he thought he was going to be at overtime. I know that there's been a, a, a lot of effort to reduce your overtime. Can you tell us where you were at last year and what it looks like this year? Oh boy. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have those exact numbers. Uh, I know uh, we came in under budget on the combination of overtime and comp time. Okay. And uh, so far this year, um, were even reduced from that point. So uh, we're doing real good at this point as, uh, with regard to comp time and overtime. Thank you. Sarah, you grab those numbers? Yeah, so overtime last year, they ended at 104,000. Comp time, they ended at 78,000. Okay. Um, the combination of those two is One. down from the year before. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. Okay. Anybody okay. else? Sure, you. you know, we I, and I meant to mention to Chris some of these items like uh, you know his salt burn, his salt dome and uh, the, fi the service garage and the chief here with the call, call volume talking about that and I think that um, what we decided we want to do is that we should start running those through committee, okay? So we should get have them you know if they can run it through the safety committee and through the public works committee and let's start talking there because it sounds like it, it needs discussion. And you know more than just you know having the finance committee together, so um, that would be my recommendation. And I think uh, council up here is in agreement. We've had little side discussions mm -hmm. up here, and I think we're all in agreement that we want to start running that stuff through committee. Yeah, no problem. Okay. What else from the chief? Anything from fire department? No. Chief, uh, you, maybe you just real quick, um, the two items are on the capital that that life pack monitor lease. That's that will be payment number two on a three year cycle, and the fire engine lease that, that's payment number three on a 10 year cycle. Just for your awareness, okay? Very good, thank you, Chief. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
All right, uh, Mr. Chief Noga. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, sir. Yes. Good Sound evening. great, Chris. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully my hopefully my bright orange shirt is not blinding you right now, but it's <laughs> it's scout meeting night tonight as well, so pulling double duty. Right. Okay. All right, so you can see the numbers there for police and dispatch. Um, they're pretty consistent from 19 through to 21 on either side. Um, but if you have any questions there, we can certainly address them. Um, but we'll just get into the uh, departmental updates and the upcoming capital needs. So uh, I know we're pressed for time, so just to move through this quickly, you know, every time we seem to have a, a retirement in the command staff, we, we take that opportunity to uh, look at our structure and reassess. And we're in the process of doing that again uh, with the assistant chief position. And since uh, Assistant Chief Kaczewski retired at the beginning of this year. So we'll be looking at that to see um, uh, and make sure we're using the, uh, we're using our, our management and our supervision in the department effectively. So that's, we're gonna be focusing on that. Um, that moves into retirements. Uh, I know for sure we have enough, at least one more uh, retirement this year. And that's due to, uh, uh, that particular officer maxing out in the deferred retirement option program. Um, there are at least three other officers who are, uh, could be eligible any time to go through the drop program. So, uh, you know, we, we try to just like the fire department, keep an eye on that so that we don't get too behind the game. Um, when it comes to, to replacing, uh, due to retirement, um, as you all know, that the difficulty of finding uh, adequate, more than adequate, good candidates for police officers throughout the country is difficult, uh, making it very difficult for us as an agency as well. Uh, in that regard, we'll be testing for sergeant and lieutenants uh, in the fall, and uh, there will probably be some promotions towards the end of the year, if not at the beginning of the year. And then finally, uh, I'm pleased, uh, this was an opportunity that, that came up with uh, uh, my fellow chiefs in Aurora and Hudson. Uh, we have put together a training consortium with both those for all three departments. And we're going to begin uh, next month training together regularly. Uh, two fa twofold to this. Uh, one is it's, it's a, a cost savings, of course, because we're using uh, expertise from three different departments instead of having to bring outside instructors in to teach different topics, but also familiarization. Uh, our officers get to know the officers a little bit better in Aurora and Hudson. Uh, we do work together uh, from time to time, and it's always good to be on the same page as far as uh, how policy rolls, how we, uh, we do things operationally. So I'm really excited about that. It's something uh, I've looked at for a long, long time, but we finally have uh, the leadership and those other two agencies that were willing to uh, embrace the idea and move forward with it. So those are my departmental updates. Okay. And then the upcoming capital needs, uh, I believe all that went through uh, the capital improvement board and was approved there as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at the, uh, you know, getting the drone uh, I think that's going to be uh, uh, very significant. Uh, there were some things for capital that we kicked down the road a little bit. Uh, most significantly is that uh, citywide wireless um, camera network. Uh, it, it's something I si think we should seriously, seriously take a look at. I think not only will it benefit the police department, uh, but the city as a whole. Um, but, you know, we'll continue to talk about that throughout this year and see where we end up. And, uh, that is basically it for the police department as uh, far as the budget is concerned. Okay, anybody have any questions for the chief? Anybody's good? No. We're all good, chief, if you have nothing else. Thank you. Enjoy all right, thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Hope Thank to you. see you soon. Thanks very much. Okay, so now we've gone through um, all these major budgets, and uh, tonight we have the budget on for the third reading uh, and for our approval tonight. So um, with that, I would like to make a motion that we recommend uh, 
that the finance committee recommends to council that we approve the budget uh, to be passed tonight. Is there a second? A second. Scott seconds. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Passes. We're Thank good, Sarah. You. Thank you very much, and okay. thank you for your patience as we move through all those. Um, we I just wanted to bring it. some of those bigger items to mm -hmm. finance committee so that you know what's coming to you eventually. Um, now we'll get into a little discussion about the American Rescue Plan. Uh, first thing, just know that this is all very general information. Until we get guidelines from the U.S. Treasury, uh, none of this is truly defined. It's all estimates, um, and we don't really know what we can use the money for until those guidelines come down. It took quite a bit of time last year uh, to really know what we could use that money for and when we could use it. I think it was the last week of December last year we found out we could have another year to figure out and make sure we use that money properly. Uh, right now the estimate is 3.7 million that would be allocated to us uh, with half of it most likely coming this year and half next year. Obviously, we will have to report on the use of those funds, and we do have some extra time, though, on this package to, to use the money we have until December 31st of 2024. So uh, it's, it's a better time use than the last package. So what's dispersed in 21 doesn't have to be used in 21? No, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. At, at least the guidelines that we have right now, which are, like I said, are very uh, generic and are yet to be defined. Okay. Um, so there's four sort of main bucket buckets of eligible uses that this is really what we're going to wait on the U.S. Treasury to define and let us know what all of this means. Um, revenue replacement to the extent of re reduction in revenue. Uh, so obviously we would hope that we would be able to replace the income tax that we lost. Um, perhaps we could also use it to replace the gas excise tax money that we thought we were going to get because we thought we'd get an extra $400,000. We just don't know the rules yet. Um, the next bucket would be premium pay for essential workers until they define what premium pay is and until they define who an essential worker is. Um, there's not a lot we can do there just yet. Uh, then we get down into the assistance um, for economic recovery. So that's similar to what we did with the small business grant program last year. Um, again, we don't know how that's going to be defined. Uh, that last item there, I think, is um, one of the more interesting ones and is very different from last year's package, that it allows us to use this money for investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Um, when I highlighted that and sent it out to the department heads, it took Amy about eight minutes to send me back a list of water and sewer infrastructure programs <laughs> that she needs to run, that she would like to get done, that she would like to catch some things up on. Um, and I, I truly think that would be a great use of this money because not only would it help the residents, but it would put people back to work that would come into town and work on those projects. Um, so. Again, we would need so much more detail to figure out what we can use that for, but I think that that is a great new option for this money, and we have time to use it. So we can plan out those projects um, and figure out how best to, to serve the residents with that money. Um, do you have any questions on those eligible uses, keeping in mind that I don't have a whole lot of things defined just yet? Thank you, Sarah. Good. Good? Okay. Um, the non-eligible uses you can see down there, um, essentially my interpretation of their non-eligible uses is that they, they want you to use this money, they want you to put it back out into the community, put people to work, um, and, and so it's not really meant to solve problems that were there before, I guess. Uh, but again, until those guidelines come down, you know, we don't really know what we can do with it. Um, any other questions on American Rescue Plan before I move on? I just want to touch on this only because it wasn't said out loud. Uh, Non-eligible uses, funds cannot be deposited into any pension fund. Is that that's your understanding of the current rules? 
That's our understanding of the current rules that came down from you know some of the financial organizations. And I, I, I did forget to mention that we did rejoin the Ohio Municipal League. Uh, those folks are gonna be out there fighting um, in DC to make sure that we can use this money for the things that would be most beneficial to the municipalities. But at this time, no, the funds cannot be deposited into any pension fund. Yeah, I, I've just seen some, uh, some scuttlebutt on the internet recently that this is uh that we've won the lottery with this and you're telling me we've got about three and a half million dollars dispersed out over two years so let's call it 1.75 it's roughly what three percent and change of a 50 million dollar budget and that that should preclude us from continuing to do our due diligence as a finance committee and a council to uh to do what's best for the city and um you gotta I, stop watching Facebook. Uh, absolutely, no, no, no. I'm just, just, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure I understand that banking on this is sort of like me quitting my job because I won a hundred thousand dollars on a scratch-off lottery ticket. So I just. And you I, also don't know if you really won yet. Yeah, right. Because I haven't, I haven't actually cashed the ticket. That's an excellent right. point, Miss McFerrin. Mm -hmm. All right, I just, I, I just wanted to to say that. <clears throat> Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, do, do you, is there any possibility in your opinion, I, I recognize this is a loaded question, um, that we can use any of that money Reagan's towards the capital expenses? So I, I guess I'll, um, I'll refer back to those four kind of buckets yep. that are available. Um, none of those really allow for okay. capital investment. Sure. It is infrastructure investment, the revenue replacement, small business health, okay. yeah. premium Thank you. pay for essential workers. Yep, those are the four uses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next. All right. Um, so to wrap up here, uh, just real quick, um, it's, to clarify, we've talked about this, I know, several different times, um, but the 2.4 police and fire levy, should it pass, um, what our tax budget, which is how the property taxes get set for the community by the county, um, it would show a total of one mil for the police pension fund, a total of one mil for the fire pension fund, and one mil for police and fire capital. Um, should the levy not pass, it would just show the 0.3 mil, which is the state minimum, and the 0.3 mil, which is, again, state minimum for the police and fire pension funds. And that would be the total next year um, for the city of Twinsburg. It would be 0.6 of one mil property taxes would go to the city. Um, I believe the current total millage for the city is around 58 mills. Sarah, sh should uh, that issue pass mm -hmm. and we get the 2.4 additional, again, it would be laid out like you're saying on the top there, is that, does that money, when it is collected, where does that money go? Does it have to go into the general fund and then be transferred? Or is it, I know it can only be spent on police and fire, but I've got a couple questions about, well, it's got to go into the general fund and blah, blah, blah. Can you, can you clarify how that money needs to be moved? Right, so I, I actually have a picture there on the right side of that slide. If you can see what things would have looked like last year, that is from the county certification. Uh, if we had been able to use the charter inside millage, you can see very clearly it would have gone to the police pension fund, the fire pension fund, and capital improvement we would report the same way should the 2.4 pass. Um, and, and really, I think we define the capital improvement even more, and we would just set up a police and fire capital yep. fund. It would make it easier for reporting inside of finance, and mm -hmm. it would add to the transparency to the folks, um, you know, should they vote that through. So that money cannot, does not, will not go into the general fund. City of Twinsburg. It would not go into the general. Thank fund. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Sarah, anything else? Uh, 
next meeting date april 27th okay council <laughs> does council have anything else we have time for comments or questions anybody have anything did you say the next meeting is april 27th yes april 27th uh should be six, six o'clock just good yeah six we feel that gives you enough time are we rushing you or 6 30. i mean it depends on what she has for the agenda yeah. You can let us know. We'll call it at six. Right. And Probably when we get a little closer to that date, we'll know what we need to talk about at that meeting. Um, I have a couple things that we will talk about, but depending on how things are, we might need to add a few things. Thanks. Okay. Uh, if that's it, then uh, the meeting is adjourned at um, what time? Six fifty-six. Uh, caucus will start in four minutes.